Worldwide Hippies presents Hippie News and Stuff with Winston Smith and the Worldwide Hippies News Team. Welcome to Hippie TV News and Stuff for the week of July 11th, brought to you by WorldwideHippies.com. I am Winston Smith. This week, depleted uranium munitions in Libya, militarization of the Arctic, P.E. Nolan is back with a call to activism, our asshole of the weekend more. First, our top story. UN says Texas execution broke international law. The question of his guilt was never raised, but the process Texas took to convict Huberto Garcia Leal was illegal under international law. Under that law, any person arrested in a foreign country has a right to talk to their embassy if there is one in there. According to MSNBC, UN High Commissioner for Human Rights Navi Pillay cited a 2004 International Court of Justice ruling saying the U.S. must review and reconsider the cases of 51 Mexican nationals sentenced to death here, including Mr. Leal. But, she said, that never happened. Texas executed Leo Thursday over the objections from President Barack Obama's administration and even old G.W. Bush that the action would violate international treaty obligations and put U.S. citizens abroad at risk. The Obama administration warned that executing Leo would violate the Vienna Convention also on conciliar relations and leave U.S. citizens traveling abroad at a higher risk of arrest without cause or denial of diplomatic representation. Hey, fresh out of college, like children, want to make the world a better place? Then how about a career in teaching? It's the most important job in the world. And to do it, you're going to have to give up everything in the world. Falling pay, falling benefits, no unions, and no respect. You'll have class sizes of 40, 50, or even 60 kids. Reading, writing, and arithmetic are out, and babysitting is in. So you can help to churn out the least educated, most illiterate generation of fast food workers in American history. And you'll be able to walk to work from the home even you can afford in a neighborhood with the worst schools and lowest property values in America. So head on over to Wisconsin, Indiana, or New Jersey, we're open for business, but closed for learning. And this, the U.S. is denying reports of evidence of depleted uranium being used in the bombing of Libya. APA News reported that sites targeted included civilian and civilian infrastructures. Scientists from the Surveying and Collecting Specimens and Laboratory Measuring Group confirmed radioactive isotopes at bombed sites. Foreign Policy and Focus columnist Con Hellman told Press TV that the fact that the U.S. is denying the use of depleted uranium munitions is just nonsense. As a result, long-term consequences for Libyans are going to be severe. Former Pentagon Depleted Uranium Project Director Dr. Doug Roke told Russia Today that depleted uranium struck areas can't be decontaminated saying it is a half-life of 4.5 billion years, and as a result, it is called the silent killer that will never stop killing. During the 1991 Gulf War, Roke was ordered to lie about its use and effects. It damaged his health, and most of his crew have died from exposure. Nonetheless, depleted uranium is so good against all types of targets that the Pentagon will never give it up, he said. The U.S. government also has given corporations that profit from depleted uranium immunity from any civil or criminal actions that may arise as time exposes more casualties from this man-made scourge. Depleted uranium is a major component in arms for the U.S. military and has been used for over 25 years and are responsible for dirt, birth defects, illnesses, early death, and long-term contamination of Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Kuwait, and other places that have U.S. munitions being used or been used. And here is P.E. Nolan with a call to action. What's coming up, Trish? Thanks, Winston. You know, in October, we will have been in Afghanistan for a decade, 10 whole years. Uh, also in October, the 2012 austerity budget kicks in, cutting essential services for people so we can provide endless money for corporate interests and for war. So this October 6th, a coalition of groups will gather in Washington, D.C. for sustained nonviolent resistance. Stop the Machine is calling all people who seek 
peace, economic justice, human rights, and a healthy environment to come to Freedom Plaza for music, art, and theater to oppose the corporate criminals who have come to dominate our government and our lives. Bill Moyers, Cornell West, Chris Hedges, Veterans for Peace, uh, Fire Dog Lake, the Zeitgeist Movement, uh, Takoon, and lots of others have already pledged to attend. I did too because um, Dennis Trainer, uh, Lee Camp, and the Punk Patriot are going, so you know it's going to be fun. Um, but also, uh, Dr. Margaret Flowers, the single payer advocate, uh, is encouraging people to come to Washington as opposed to having solidarity efforts at home so we can have a strong presence. October 6th is about our future. It's not some show on Comedy Central. Stop the machine. Create a new world. Back to you, Winston. And we'll be there for sure. And you can t catch P.E. Nolan each Monday right here. Here in a story that would make Sarah Palin proud, the battle for the Arctic is part of a global military agenda of conquest and territorial control. The United States has adopted a unilateral approach to Arctic development. It has refused to approve the 1982 UN Convention on the Law of the Sea, which was ratified by both Russia and Canada. The United States is heading to a major confrontation with Russia and Canada over the rights to exploit the Arctic. All three nations are building up their militaries in the Arctic. The corporate media is staying away from the story, waiting for the showdown to happen. When it does, the same corporations will be ready to step in and profit from contracts with the winner. It's all about the money, people. Oh, and it's time for our Asshole of the Week. This week it goes to the 238 climate change deniers of the House of Representatives. As Richard Mazzucci wrote in the Daily News, climate change is putting our food at risk. Extreme floods, droughts, tornadoes, and fires seem to be everywhere. And among the many devastating impacts is the threat to vital food crops. So it's shocking that 238 members of our House of Representatives last month were more concerned with casting a vote to deny that climate change is affecting our planet than to implement a new common sense policy to help prepare for global warming and plans for ways to prevent disastrous disruptions in our food supply. Since getting elected last year, the Republican majority in the House has been consistently anti-science and anti-reality, as evidenced by their notorious vote against the resolution that simply said climate change was occurring, was caused largely by human activity and posed a threat to our health. Growing demand for staple grains, along with significant crop failures from extreme weather, has caused major price spikes and grain shortages globally over the past few years. Storms are stronger, droughts and heat waves longer, and are increasing. It only makes sense for the Department of Ag Agriculture to pursue policies that protect our nation's ability to grow food. Their proposed three-page three -page policy document broadly states that the USDA will develop, prioritize, implement, and evaluate actions to minimize climate risks and exploit new opportunities that climate change may bring. What makes no sense is denying the pattern of extreme weather happening before our eyes. So, for being so determined in this denial to prevent the Department of Agriculture from so much as planning for future extreme weather, you, the 238 corporate-owned mouthpieces of the House of Representatives, are worldwide hippies and assholes. And that's it for this week. Please share our videos with others and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And always, visit WorldWideHippies.com for articles from our own writers, as well as news and stuff from around the world updated every two hours. And we will see you right here next month.